Hello, good evening and welcome. I'm Karima Brown and you're watching Political Exchange where we unpack Africa's political economy. Tonight we're very honored to have the President of Malawi as our main guest. She recently addressed the United Nations General Assembly where she spoke about Malawi's vision for economic growth and recovery. President Banda, thank you so much, Madam President, for joining us uh, tonight on this program. Can you just explain to us what your economic vision is? You spoke about a journey that Malawi Malawians are on together with yourself. In economic terms, what does this journey mean? Um, I'm of the view that Malawi cannot remain underdeveloped. I'm of the view that Malawi cannot be donor dependent forever. And I s seriously believe that we can embark on a journey into the future with hope to, econo to on an economic recovery plan that will benefit all Malawians mm -hmm. and then will assist us, will help us walk away from aid to trade. Because of that, when I took over as President of the Republic of Malawi on the 7th of April, we sat down and drew an, an economic recovery plan in two phases. You will recall that by the time I took office, the economy had almost collapsed in Malawi. In fact, there were protests and there was anger all over. Malawians had given the president 60 days in which to either call a friendum or resign. And because of that, we had to bring back the economy on track. So what we did in 100 days is to ensure that we, we get back on track with the IMF, get back on the, uh, on the program where Malawi had walked away. Um, we, we were requested to devalue the kwaja by 10% since 2009. The president refused. And when I came in, as a result of that, we had to devalue by 40%. So that had an effect. That's a, that has an effect even now, particularly a, a negative impact on the poor. So therefore, we as government had also to ensure that Malawians, especially living in the rural areas, don't suffer necessarily. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, the plan, the recovery plan, is in two phases. One, one that sorted out the immediate need, need that we had. Mm -hmm. To get back on track, I'm pleased to report that we did. The donors are back. Our relationship with, the, with Britain has been restored. Our relationship with our neighbors has improved. Mm -hmm. The medium to long term is a... The is, is based on a plan that was drawn at a national dialogue on the economy where we looked at the Malawi Growth and Development Strategy, which has nine priority areas. But as, as, as government, we have picked isolated five, five that we have picked because of the potential they have to create wealth and to create jobs. And, uh, and, and so they are energy, mining, infrastructure, tourism, and agriculture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, Madam President, of course, you said that it was um, time to take tough decisions when you came in, and you took those decisions. You made a number of um, what some observers called quite remarkable uh, changes, uh, for example, devaluing the kwacha, but you also took steps um, at a political level to signal that you prepared to um, clean up and make government more efficient. Now, those austerity measures did have an impact on the poor. Um, how do you feel now after assessing and introducing those austerity measures, considering that it did hurt uh, poor Malawians, um, do you still think it was the right thing to do um, you know, at the time? Yes, we, don't, we, don't even, we didn't even have a choice. We needed to take those steps. We needed to make bold steps. We needed to devalue the kwacha. But what we needed to do is also to inform Malawians, to sensitize Malawians, that it was going to get hard before it gets better. So we are passing through that difficult phase. It's, it's not over yet. Mm -hmm. I have promised Malawians that I see us getting over that in the next 18 months. Mm -hmm. We are see while we are going through that period, while we have introduced all those austerity plans, by the way, including reducing my salary by 30%, is to hope that if we implement our medium and long-term recovery plan starting from this year, especially in the sector of agriculture, Malawians will begin to see change. Mm -hmm. 
as soon as next year. Now, of course, you leading from the front, you've just pointed out the fact that you've cut your salary. You've also decided to sell the controversial presidential jet as a gesture to show that at the very top, uh, the leadership is prepared to do what they're asking re the rest of Malawians to do. Um, how has your um, decision to do this, Madam President, gone down with the political elite in Malawi that um, came under pressure before your tenure for doing the exact opposite? Yeah, it, it's, it's very difficult to understand in uh, politics. Uh, when the plane was bought, Malawians screamed that it was a total waste of money. In, in any case, that's the reason why we started to differ with our traditional partner, the British, because they felt that we didn't need to spend all that money on, uh, uh, on, on a private jet. Having bought the jet when I came in, I decided that the first thing that I needed to do was to sell the, the jet. And by the way, having a private jet is not a luxury in Malawi. Mm -hmm. It takes me two, hour, uh, two days to go to Mozambique. But if I have a plane, it takes me an hour. Mm -hmm. And if we are going to uh, grow our relationship with the, our neighbors, we need that kind of interaction. Mm -hmm. But when I na announced that I was going to sell the plane, 75% of Malawians said, no, it is our asset. You can't sell it. But I insist that for me, I shall never use the plane. It doesn't make sense at all to spend all that money on running a plane, and I'm informed that even when it is just parked in Malawi, mm -hmm. it is an expense to our, our, our country. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, Malawians at grassroots, all they are looking for is an improvement in their standard of living. Mm -hmm. They have suffered too, mo too much and they deserve better. Mm -hmm. So for them, they are not looking at whether I have a plane or not. They are looking at uh, what is it that I can do, and I think reducing my salary by 30%, which is all the increment I got to become president, is, is more significant than selling a plane because to them it's neither there, here nor there. But for me, all these translate into the austerity measures and demonstration and political will at the top, at my level, mm -hmm. that I'm prepared to make sacrifices. Mm -hmm. As Malawians go through this difficult time, we are in this together. Mm -hmm. Now, when I was going through your speech that you made at the United Nations, you had a very interesting way in which you described growth. You said what Malawians need is growth, but not just growth in hard economic terms. Growth also means taking more children into schools, getting more mothers, maternal care, and so on. There is often this idea, Madam President, that all you need is economic growth and everything will flow from there. Jobs will flow from there. Inequality will be dealt with. Explain your understanding of growth within the context of the very real social conditions within Malawi? I, I, I have said, I said in that speech and I say now again, that I am convinced now that countries will prosper, but very much will depend on the political will at the top, who is sitting in the driving seat and what is it that they are doing. In Malawi, 16, 690 women die giving birth out of 100,000. And we are the, w the second worst in Africa after Sierra Leone, which was at war. So I don't believe that this is because we are the poorest country. But I just believe that there's things that we should have done that we didn't do. So for me, uh, growth doesn't just mean GDP. For me, growth means me m taking steps, making sure that I reduce the death of women giving birth to another life because it's unacceptable. Mm -hmm. For me, growth means getting more children into school. Our children attend primary school, but they don't go to secondary school because it's not free. What is it that I can do to encourage more girls to go to school? Because if they don't go, they get married at 15, and they die giving birth anyway mm -hmm. because their body is not mature. Mm -hmm. There are several other things that we have done, we have to do in the social sector that will, for me, will translate into my country is growing, my country is prospering, the lives of the people is improving, rather than just money. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, you've spent a lot of time before you became president as a person on the ground working with women and children. Um, those skills that you picked up there is obviously going to come into good stead now. What do you think um, leaders, Madam President, need um, to take from ordinary people when they are occupy positions of power to, to demonstrate that they understand in real terms what ordinary people are facing every day? To start with, uh, w it has become increasingly uh, clear on the continent of Africa that people are going to be looking for 
leaders that want to serve them, servants of the people, stewardship is going to be very critical. Homegrown leadership. And uh, for me, uh, having worked with people at grassroots all my, all my life, I know that what Malawians' aspirations are, are to, to, uh, to live a better life. And for me, is to demonstrate that with the limited resources that we have, I can be able to go an extra mile mm -hmm. to be able to, to deliver that to the people. The people will listen, and the people will rise and stand with you. The people will work hard with you if they see that you are sincere, if they grow to trust you. And I think perhaps the difference between a man and a woman's leadership is the fact that we, we, one, we address issues, social issues first. One, we look at the situation of women and children and youth. But, but secondly, we also want leadership of inclusiveness. In my particular case, I got to this position when there was so much anger and pain uh, and resentment and hatred in Malawi. People from political parties went, to, went even talking to one another. Mm -hmm. The president had been given 60 days in which to call for a referendum or resign. And, and the first statement I made to the nation, Malawians have told me that that is the speech that lifted the load off from our shoulders. Because I just told everybody, we can't revenge, we can't hate one another. We need to mo move into the future united, standing together side by side with hope. Mm -hmm. And so for the first time in, the, in Malawi, you find that people from all political parties wearing their different uniforms, attending my events, dancing together, which is, has never happened before. Mm -hmm. This is the first time it is happening in, in Malawi. Once you create that kind of environment where people are at peace with each other and with themselves, then issues of development come naturally. Mm -hmm. uh, Madam President, we have to take a short break, but when we come back, we will continue our conversation, particularly about economic growth and partnerships between uh, yourselves and the private sector. Uh, our guest today, Madam President Joyce Banda from Malawi.